Let's talk about the query function, and it is probably the most powerful function in Google Sheets. And if there's one thing you learn in this course, then I really think that the query function is probably the one that that should be. It should, it's the most powerful function, it's the most useful, and it replaces a whole bunch of other functions if you learn to really wield it properly. Essentially, it's, what it actually does is runs the Google Visualization API query language across your data. What the heck does that mean? It means that you essentially can manipulate your data and analyze your data using a SQL a structured query language type uh, type syntax. So if you've ever if you've ever worked with databases, then this is kind of like using a database language inside of Google Sheets to uh, summarize your data, to aggregate your data, to filter your data, to sort your data, that kind of stuff. And it's just an amazingly powerful little function. You can you can sort of doing these incredible things with your data. So it's it's really worth learning. It's really worth spending the time. And this lesson, we're going to run through some of the some basic scenarios or use cases uh, using this set of data here, which is the top 50 buildings in the world. We're going to look at how we can just pull out different aspects of this table and summarize it in different ways. So as a first step, let's actually just give this a named range to save us highlighting it every single time. So let's highlight it once, data, named ranges, and we're going to call this buildings. And that way, whenever I want to refer to this table, I can just type in the word buildings in my query, and I don't need to worry about referencing it every single time. So let me start with the most basic query of all. We simply type the word query, and now I can just reference buildings, and you see it highlights that that full data set orange, which is the one we just named, so that saves us having to reference it. and. The second argument, if I actually click to just open out, let's expand the, uh, the helper, you'll see the second argument is the query. That's the, the language that tells the query API how to manipulate our data. So we tell it what we want it to do. And the, the simplest of all is just to write the word select. It always starts with select, which is the instruction of, you know, which data do you want me to select, literally. And then star just gets everything because we're not specifying a column and star just pulls back all of the columns. So this is going to return the whole data set, this select star. So it's the most basic. We enclose the, this query language inside of the quotation marks. And then I have a, co a comma. And the final argument, which is optional, is whether you have a header row and uh, how many header rows you have. So in my case, it's one, because I have this one header row that I've included in my buildings. Um, if I had highlighted if I'd admitted, not highlighted that row, then I could have put zero and said I had no header header rows. And you can also use the, you can set it to be minus one and let the query function just, just figure it out automatically. So if I hit enter now, it's gonna bring back the, the whole data set for me. So what was the point of that? Well, <laughs> the point of that was just to introduce the syntax obviously, but now we can go ahead and start to modify this one and take a look at what this is actually um, doing under the hood. So let's say now, instead of all of the columns, we just want to select specific ones. And what I'd like to do is just return the list of buildings and their, their heights. So that's columns B, let me close that now, columns B here and column E. So if I type them in and hit enter, you'll see that now it just brings me back the name of the building and the height of the building. Let's add in the year it was built, and we would do that by uh, comma F, and that just brings in the building. We can just actually start, we can still format the data. Now, what you'll notice is this data is just part of a formula at the moment. So if I tried to ever, if I said actually the height of this one needed to be changed to 1750, for example, and I type that in, then it will break the formula because this formula here needs to expand into whatever space it needs. and if there's anything that prevents it from doing that, like a cell that's got some other data in it, it's going to break and give you this reference error. Uh, so the array result was not expanded because it would override the data, overwrite the data in I11, which is this one here. If we delete that, then it comes right back. So if you, once you've used a query, if you then need to do some, some work or other people want to do some work on it, and you think that people might start typing in over the top of this, then you should go ahead and, and, and turn these copy and paste special and turn them into values rather than just leaving them as a query function. Okay, so let's keep going. Let's now take a look at all of the buildings where they were built um, before 2010. So all of the older 
ones like the Empire State Building, for example. We want to find out all of the all of the buildings that were built before 2010 and see how many there were. Sorry, before the year 2000, let's go with that. And so what we'll do is we'll, we'll select B, E, and F still, and then we say, we're going to apply a filter, and we use the word where. That's the filter word. And we say, select these columns where this condition is satisfied. And the where is one of the keywords that yeah, determines the... Um, that tells the, the query language you want to do a filter. And there's a link below this video to explain more about those different keywords, what they are, uh, and show you run through all of these examples as well. So this will move quite quickly, this video, but you know, go ahead and check out those links to, to figure out more. So I'll hit enter now, and there we can see it's now just pulled out all of the buildings that were built before the year 2000. Okay, so let me show you another one. Let's take a look at, let's add back the country. So B, E, D, E, and F, and just include that now in our query. And we'll also get rid of this, this condition. We'll do a different condition in a second. So we'll bring back all the buildings, the countries, the heights, and let's now just filter again. Let's do a second filter and another filter example, and just filter on United States. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll say, select those four columns where and we reference the original column, so where D, not the new column here, which is I, we're re referencing the original column, where D equals, and then I need to put a single quotation mark, type in the word United States, which matches how it's written in this column, so there, for example, and then another single quotation mark, and then hit enter, and that will bring back just the buildings from the United States. So that's the same, you know, what we're doing is the same as if we'd had, if we'd had a filter across the top here, dropped it down and just selected um, United States. So that's what this, this construction is doing. At the moment they're sorted from height, highest to lowest. So let's order them in terms of um, oldest to smallest. So what I do for that is I'm going to be using the same data set so we don't need to change our filters that we have so far. I simply come in after the United States and I'm going to say order by. And this is another keyword, order by here. And it's, it's me telling the query language how to sort the data. And it follows on, it is very, the order of these is really important. So the, the select comes first with the columns, then the, the, the where condition, the filter comes next, and then the order by comes after that. And we're gonna order by F, and we're gonna do ascending. So we're gonna start from the smallest to the largest. So we'll have the oldest ones first, and there we go. It's going to put the Empire State Building first, and it's going to sort them now all the way through to this, the latest one. We can also change it from ASC is ascending to DESC, descending, and that will just show me them in descending order from the newest to the oldest. Now, let me also say, if you want, that it's more traditional to, to write these keywords in 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 capital letters, in uppercase rather. And so if that helps you to understand that these are keywords, then feel free to follow that convention. Um, I often don't, probably because I'm a little lazy on that front, but it's, uh, if it helps you to write them with the uppercase, then, then go for it, it still works. And that's the traditional way of writing uh, those SQL, SQL code. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the top five buildings. So let's see what that would look like. So we'll say select B, D, E, F, and then let's just get rid of the whole uh, filter and the sort that we just had and just leave them. We've just got the four columns, but we've got all 50 back. And let's just say we want to get the top few now. Then we can do that with using a, a word called limit. And we can just say limit five, and that will just bring back just those top, and that will bring back just those top five. So that's the word limit five and uh, you know, you could have also done a, a where clause and said where the height is greater than 1,800, for example. Now, this is where things get a little more technical, a little more interesting, and this is something that would take me probably an hour or more to teach properly. So we're just gonna fly through it, show you an example. I'll try and explain it as best I can, but it, it's gonna take practice. So try this out. If it doesn't immediately make sense, just keep trying, read about it, and, and it will eventually. So let's clear out the limits there and what I'd like to do is to select the the country this time in fact let's just start with just the country and and show that so it's got all of the countries there so that's just essentially bringing back this column now what I'd like to do in this example is to count how many 
buildings each country has. So China, for example, has one there, one there, one there, three there, a couple there. So, so China's gonna have a, a large number of buildings, you know, 10, 20 plus buildings in this list. The United States had around about uh, five or six we saw, and the United Arab Emirates have a number of very tall buildings in the world, and Malaysia has a number of tall buildings in the world. So what I'd like to do is get a count of the buildings for each of these countries. So the way we do that is to say, let's select D, so select the country. Then I want to count. And it really doesn't matter now necessarily which column I'm gonna choose here. I'm just gonna choose one of the other columns that as provided it's not, doesn't have any gaps in it. So we can choose, let's just choose column uh, B here and it's gonna count the building names. It's it, like I said, it doesn't actually matter which column essentially, it's just gonna count the column for me. Uh, and so it's gonna select the country and then it's gonna count how many things are in this country. Now to make that work, what I need to do is group on column D. And I'll show you what I mean in a moment. If I just hit enter now, you'll see it gives me the error. And if we have a look, it'll tell me that I can't mix. I said it says add column to group by or aggregate D. And what that means is I can't have a an aggregated metric here. So I've, I've counted B, which is gonna summarize it, shrink B down to a count. And then I've left D just as it was. It doesn't make any sense. SQL can't have a whole column uh, and a single number in the same in the same select. So what I need to do is say, okay, well, group by D. And what that means is count B for each individual unique member of D. And if I hit enter now, you'll see what it does is it goes ahead and actually just lists the unique countries and then counts how many rows of data there are for each of these countries. So that's the group by, and that comes after the select. Now we can go ahead and sort. So let's instead order by now by, and this time we do want to order by the count of B and we want, so that's this column here that came in and we want to order DESC. So descending has the four to DESC, ascending was just ASC. And this time now it'll put them in the correct order for me. Now, if I want to use a where clause, I can do that. And what I do is just stick it in front here in between the select and the group by, so it comes before the group and we'll say, let's say where F is greater than 2000. So all the buildings after the year 2000, if we actually flip that round and say, well, let's look at a count of all the buildings before 2000 and who had the most then, then you'll see that's still China, Malaysia and the United States, but the United Arab Emirates, for example, had no buildings built before the year 2000. So that's quite interesting. One last thing I want to show you uh, during this quick fly through is let's take that where out for now, just so we have a bit more data to look at is if I open this column out a little bit, you'll see that it's, it's called count building name. It just, it just, all it does is it takes the name of the original column and puts the word count in front of it with a lowercase c. And it just looks a little bit ugly. What we can do is at the very, very end of our um, SQL clause here, I can write the word label and I can say label count b. So I have to, again, specify which table of my new data set I'm talking about. And I want to then label that as the uh, number of tall buildings. And again, I have to use single quotes, single quotation marks to wrap uh, around whatever the heading is. So number of tall buildings. Uh, again, you can see there, I have a single quotation and another single quotation uh, inside of my, my uh, query clause. Hit enter, and then it's changed that label now to the number of tall buildings. And so you can see what it's done essentially is this is effectively doing what a pivot table might do but we've done it with one neat formula and then this data is more accessible than it would be if it was in a pivot table on a different sheet, uh, that kind of thing. And, and, and the other nice thing that makes query so powerful is that this, this buildings here, the data you feed into query can be the result of other queries or array formulas or filter formulas that, that, you know, there's a myriad ways you can combine the query with other functions to make some really powerful uh, and effective data analysis um, methods in your sheet. So, so spend some time with query function. Again, start with the data set a little bit like this. Try to make heads or tails of what the query function is doing. And then when you get the hang of it, you'll find yourself reaching for the query function whenever you're doing your data analysis. So thanks for watching folks. And that is the query function. 